Okay, welcome back everybody. So this is our second lecture in our series about Darcy and his law. And in this lecture, we will talk about permeameter. So this is the tool basically that Darcy used to do experiments uh, and derive his laws, law. So we will describe what a permeameter is and the kind of data you can get from it and sort of derive Darcy's law uh, empirically, or if you will, by dimensional analysis, essentially. Okay, so here it is. Um, this on the left-hand side here is actually an actual depiction from Darcy, a sketch that he uh, had in his book, uh, in his you know, Fountains of Dijon book. Um, and this is quite a massive apparatus. This is about a foot in uh, diameter here. Uh, and this is several meters high. You can have up to two meters uh, of sand in there. So it's quite a big apparatus. And the principle is obviously simply to flow some water in and measure the water out. So again, the mass balance thing, right? Uh, and here's a, a sketch on the right-hand side uh, with the relevant um, parameters, if you will, right? So if our goal is to know, again, the goal of Darcy was to know how much water can we get out of a sand column, out of a formation. So Q should be proportional to, uh, and again, if we, if we consider here on the right-hand side what uh, the parameters are, right, we, we're thinking, okay, the head, if there's more head, right, there's more pressure, we should push more water through. So H should be, you know, a factor uh, that drives the flow. Now, L here, right, if there's more and more sand, so if the column of sand, so sand, again, friction, right, think friction, so the water has to work to get through that sand. So the more sand there is, the more length of sand there is, you know, the less uh, water we should expect to get. So probably H over L uh, is a good description. So of course, the area here of the column, right, so the larger the tube, if you have a massive tube, you should expect to get more flow, right, than if you have a tiny tube. So of course, the area should also influence uh, the flow. So this is basically the first description of Darcy's law right there. So we're saying that the discharge out of the permeameter here should be proportional to the area of the column, the head, and inversely proportional to the length of sand or the length of the porous media that you have to uh, traverse. Okay. So again, Q proportional to um, A H over L. Now the question is here, what's missing? Okay, so if we look at dimensions, the, vo the discharge here is of course a volume per time and I'm writing dimensions in uh, square brackets. So area is in length squared. And of course, H is in, oops, length per length. So this is dimensionless. So what's missing here is a length per time. So we're missing a parameter that is in length per time. So dimensions of velocity. Again, dimensions of velocity, but not quite velocity. The other thing we don't know, right, is, so we're saying the discharge should be proportional to area H over L, but we don't know the functionality. So we don't know if it's a linear relationship or if it's, you know, an exponential relationship or what is the relation, what is the function of those parameters that actually Q is. So, so the relationship between Q and those factors, you know, could be linear, but it doesn't have to be. So we'll see in a minute uh, what we can do about this. Uh, just a quick note in passing, we talked about head in the last module. Um, of course, if you have a slanted permeameter or a column that is not, you know, vertical, then you have to account for the difference in elevation, right? So again, just to remind you that it's really the head difference, not just the height difference that's important so the head here you know would be z plus p over gamma and not just the vertical uh, uh, distance so here this is our unknown that's called hydraulic conductivity and that's the first time i'm naming it we'll see this is a very important factor uh, we'll see what it is but the point here is that it's really the head difference not just uh, the altitude or the height 
Okay. All right, so two types of permeameters that we can uh, think about. So one is the const what we call the constant head because we're maintaining H1 and H2 constant, right? So it's basically open to the atmosphere uh, at H1 and at H2, so we know what the head is and we can do Darcy's experiments, basically. Now, a problem we have in the field is that obviously we can't just like take a core, you know, take it out of the ground and measure the permeability or the hydraulic conductivity or, you know, we can do those experiments, you know, in the field. So oftentimes we're left with what we call those falling head permeameters. And you might remember that picture from a previous lecture, right? So where does the water go? Again, it goes on the ground and we don't see it. So one way you can do that is just put a piezometer, like put a PVC pipe in the ground, fill it up with water and watch it drop, right? So the point here is that now the head is not constant, right? The head is actually dropping in this tube here. So let's say we're adding the water here and we're watching it drop, 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 drop over time. Now, obviously, because now the flow is going to depend on the head, but the head changes over time, now we have a little bit of a more complicated situation that we need to account for, and we'll talk about this in a second. Okay, so for the constant head, again, so constant, you know, the head is maintained here, and the head is maintained here, open to the atmosphere, so we know what the head is, constant head, you know, what can we expect? What is that relationship between the discharge and those parameters? And here's a quick... Uh, animation, right? So if we assume that this is a linear relationship, you can see here we have the uh, hydraulic conductivity, K, is the slope of Q over A versus H over L, right? Remember that relationship we had before, Q proportional to the unknown, and then H over L, and then A, right? So if we do Q over A, and we assume there's a linear um, relationship between those things, then we can plot Q over A versus H over L, and if it's linear, we should have a slope that gives us that hydraulic conductivity, that length per time, that, you know, similar to a velocity uh, dimension. So if it's linear, we'll check it in experiments in a minute, in the next video, right, we'll do a lab where we can actually observe if it is linear or not, um, but uh, this is the hypothesis. Now for the falling head permeameter, uh, we have a different situation because, again, now we have H of T. In equals out, right? There's a mass balance here. So whatever flow we have in should be equal to whatever flow we get out, right, from mass balance. And the flow in here is uh, little a would be the area of the column, right, times dH dt. So that gives us a little volume over some period of time, right? So this volume over time, this little... Q in should be equal to Q out, and again, Q out should be, if we assume, you know, the, uh, the relationship is linear, Ka H over L. Now, this is a differential equation that we can solve, right? We can separate the variables, and we can actually solve the whole thing. So if we do this, we get, um, so 1 over H dH equals minus Ka over A L dt. Right, so, oh, I forgot to mention that big A now would be, you know, the area here. That's big A. So assuming those two areas are different, you have to account for the fact that they're different. If they're the same, obviously this disappears, and then you have KL, you know, integral of dt. So this is exactly what we'll do during the lab. We'll have a column that's just the same area, so we don't have to worry about the areas. But in general, this is the equation you have, and of course you can solve that easily. 1 over H, integral of whatever H is... Uh, natural log of h minus h0 and then equals minus k over l t, right? So now we have a linear relationship in the log space. So this is the hypothesis, right? So now q of t is going to decrease, you know, non-linearly with time. And if we assume this is a log, right? If we do a log, oh, that should say log here. If there's a log here, we should have a slope uh, that is a slope that is k over l, assuming the areas are the same, okay? So now we have a hypothesis, and we can go and do experiment. That's exactly what Darcy did. You can go and measure those things. So basically, if we plot, you know, the discharge versus time, either for a constant head or for a falling head, now we can actually backtrack this unknown, this uh, uh, interrogation point, right, that we had in those equations. 
So very powerful way to, to go about it. So empirically, we can go do these experiments, we'll do in the next video, do a lab, and then you can actually measure what the hydraulic conductivity is and whether it changes, you know, if it's like sand or gravel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, now, one last uh, note here uh, is the problem with porosity. So we always go back to porosity, right? We're working in porous media, so porosity is really key. Now, if we call Q here, little Q, and this is what um, is often called Darcy flux, so it's Q over A, again, because Q over A is, right, this unknown that we call hydraulic conductivity, uh, the H over L, or H over L, right? So if we plot Q over A versus H over L, we should have the slope as this unknown. Now Q over A here, the Darcy flux has unit, as you can see, of length per time, similar to a velocity. Now in reality, that's not a velocity. This is a normalized flux, meaning this is the discharge out, right? This is the amount of water that you get out of that sand column divided by the area of the sand column. But that's not a velocity. This is a flux, right? The velocity, because there's porosity, there's like... The porous space is only, you know, a fraction, let's say 50% or 20 to 30% of the actual vo total volume of the column. So because they're solids, right, the water through the pores is actually much faster than the Darcy flux. And it's faster by, you know, the porosity. So if you divide, so the actual velocity is little q divided by porosity. So velocity is faster, again, if porosity is 0.2, right, that means that the velocity is five times faster than the Darcy flux. So the true velocity of the water, right, the time it takes to go from point A to point B is five times the flux. So the Darcy flux is not a velocity. It's a discharge divided by the area, the total area of the column. Uh, and then finally, you, we've seen that this unknown K, the hydraulic conductivity that we'll determine in the, in the lab, also has units of uh, length per time, but now this is also not a velocity. This is just the capacity of the sand or of the porous media to let water through. So there's three things that have uh, dimensions of velocity, but there are not all velocity. The only true velocity, right, is the pore scale velocity, this velocity. This is the Darcy flux, and this is the hydraulic conductivity. They all have units, dimensions of velocity, but they're not all velocity. Okay, well, that was the uh, large introduction to Darcy's Law, really our first time talking about it, uh, seeing it. So in the next uh, video, we'll do a lab where we'll do experiments where we can actually uh, determine what the hydraulic conductivity is. And then the lecture after that, we'll analyze um, the Darcy data, the original data from Darcy, so you can have a sense of how to uh, analyze that uh, data collected in the lab. Okay, thank you.